20 past the hour yesterday, the Inspector General's Office of the State Department issued a report that concluded Hillary Clinton violated the Federal Records Act by not turning over all official emails before she left office. The report also found that there was no evidence she had requested or received approval to use her personal account for official business. Clinton all along has maintained the use of her server was allowed. My personal email use was fully above board. It was allowed by the State Department, as they have confirmed. What I did was allowed by the State Department, but it wasn't the best choice. And I have been as transparent as I know to be. And you said it was allowed, uh, was, too. Yes, it was. But who, who allowed it? Who? It was allowed under the rules of the State Department. And again... So nobody signed off on no, it? No, no, it was allowed. We, you know, one of my predecessors uh, did the same thing. Others in our government have done the same thing at very high levels because the rules did change after I left the State Department. But at the time and in prior years, the rules allowed it. Well, you know, as I have said many times, you know, there was, that was absolutely permitted, and I did it, and it turned out to be uh, a mistake. It wasn't the best choice. Two State Department officials raised concerns about Clinton's exclusive use of a private email server. A senior official in Clinton's office told them the matter was not to be discussed any further. He instructed them to, quote, never to speak of the secretary's personal email system again. And according to a new Yahoo report, a congressional staffer involved in one of the Clinton email investigations identified the Clinton senior officials as John Bentel, a now retired career department official. He was questioned by the House Benghazi committee and said he had no memory or knowledge of the issues he was being asked about and declined a further request to be interviewed by the Senate Judiciary Committee. The Clinton campaign released a statement about the IG report, which read in part this, the inspector general's documents show just how consistent her email practices were with those of other secretaries and senior officials at the State Department who also used personal email. Well, it's just yeah. not, even the statement is not accurate. I know. Joining us now, national correspondent for Bloomberg Business Week and political columnist for the Boston Globe, Joshua Green. And in San Jose, California, NBC News <laughs> chief foreign affairs correspondent and host of Andrea Mitchell Reports, Andrea Mitchell. Andrea, thanks for getting up early for us. Um, the first you interview bet. we showed was the one that you did with her, and she says time and time and time and time and time and time again, it was allowed. Exactly. Was it allowed? It was not allowed to not return those records before she left the State Department. She violated the Official Records Act according to her own State Department IG appointed by President Obama. The, 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 what you have shown just now, Mika, is completely undercuts the argument she's been making for more than a year, just as she is trying to persuade voters that she's not untrustworthy. I think that the, the most surprising and in some ways shocking thing is their reaction, claiming that this is the same as what former secretaries did, the comparison they're making to Colin Powell. The facts are that Colin Powell was the first secretary of state to ever use email. He used it specifically to try to launch the, the uh, State Department into the new century and try to get people to communicate communicate by email. He was using it as an example. He did use some personal emails. He didn't uh, always uh, separate them, but it was a completely above board. Everybody in, in the State Department knew what he was doing. It was not, in fact, violating a rule that was put in place under Clinton, not, before, not after she left. It was put in place under Clinton, and she was warned beforehand of decades of this Records Act that prohibits you to leave the State Department, leave any agency, and not turn over your, your, your records. So there are so many flaws in their argument. And, uh, you know, the politics, we'll have to see how, how that plays out. But I don't see how this is anything but devastating, uh, given the fact that they have been making a completely different argument now for more than a year. Yeah, the Clinton campaign, uh, Josh has long maintained the server was never breached. But the report tells of one incident when an advisor shut it down out of concern it was under attack. And the footnotes tell of an incident in 2011 where Secretary Clinton was concerned someone was, quote, hacking into her email after getting more than one, e more than one email with a suspicious link. You know, when you get those, you get worried. According to the report, security officials 
should be notified even when a personal device is feared compromised. But according to the report, the inspector general found no evidence that the secretary or her staff ever reported the incident. And there's so much here that's fair to say, how can she remember? Well, this is the whole problem. This is the reason you have these protocols in the government servers, so you don't expose important emails to the but possibility. But when she said it was allowed, 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 does she not remember any of this? Are we supposed to believe that? I, I help, suppose help we are supposed here. to believe it. I'm not sure a lot of people do, but... Do they care? Uh, yeah, I mean, I think this is a serious issue. I mean, if you were to, and this is a big if, if you were to remove, you know, Donald Trump from the equation right now, this is the story that would be roiling the 2016 presidential election. Chuck. And, be, and more than that, it would be fueling more hand-wringing in the Democratic Party and all this. The only reason why I think there isn't panic on the Democratic side is because of Trump. You, you know, I was thinking about this this morning. If she, she, because of this breach, for instance, she could... I don't think she could get confirmed, for instance, to be attorney general. Well, you know, because oh, wow. like, you know, and I mean it this way, meaning like you, their, their basic defense here, I, I'm, I'm with Andrea and how like it's sort of a, a you know, you're, you're sort of, you're, you're, you pulled muscles here watching them trying to spin this, but their basic is, well, there wasn't a specific law that told us we couldn't do it. Right. So like, you know, so they're it's, making yeah, it a sounds very, like Al Gore, there's no, no controlling, controlling legal, legal authority. authority. Yeah, it's, it's some like specific, Andrea, and you're like, ugh. Here are the things that, that like over time we remember here, her saying repeatedly it was allowed, a private server set up in her home by an IT guy who was given immunity and his emails are missing and she even right. joked when she was asked and I think in a high school gym mm. you know did you wipe the server meaning get rid of everything right. so I no one can see server, it yeah. and she joked about it being with the cloth and I, I mean I I really don't want to be the one uh, delivering this but I got to tell you this is really hard to believe it feels like she's lying straight out Andrea Mitchell is she lying I can't say that. Uh, I mean, I would let the viewer, I would let the voter make those determinations, but it doesn't hold up. There are so many inconsistencies, including their response yesterday. And uh, as Chuck said, uh, it, it was sort of jaw dropping that they tried, instead of coming out and saying, look, you know, it was a mistake, as she has previously acknowledged, it was bad judgment. And we don't know whether or not it was hacked. We know that there were attempts to penetrate. Uh, there's no evidence in this report that that penetration, that that actually happened, but uh, you can't, you know, prove the negative. But they should have just come out, arguably, and said, uh, this is a mess and we're going to try to move on. Instead, they're fighting it and coming out with a complete, uh, a completely non-credible argument in, on her behalf. And it also makes her defensive and it makes her run from reporters and not want to do interviews and not want to talk to you know, people covering her events all day yesterday. Uh, so she's she's hunkered down now at a key point here. Yes, yeah, she's going to get the delegates, but the point is she wanted to win California. She wanted to end on a high. And Bernie Sanders is giving her a huge challenge out here, I can tell you, from, from just looking at the campaigning this week. Chuck, to that point that Andrea just raised about <clears throat> reporters asking mm -hmm. her questions, one of the more damning components of the Inspector General's report <clears throat> is, when he is when he declares in the report that Secretary Clinton declined the opportunity in a request to be interviewed when Madeleine Albright, Colin Powell, everybody else, did it. Everybody else John Kerry, uh, they all were interviewed. What do you figure, given the spin they put on this that's out today, they didn't address the, de the decline in the interview, what do they do now? How do they, how do they respond uh, to Look, that? They're clearly their decision is to never give an inch, right, which is the Clinton playbook going back to 1992, and it's worked for them in the past, right? They just grind their way through it. But I always have looked at this, it's sort of what is the Occam's razor, what's the most logical sort of explanation? And the most logical explanation is she wanted to make it harder for the press and Congress to see her correspondence. Oh, so they made FOIA requests that. more difficult by doing what? Making sure it wasn't on a government server, putting it on a private server. And, and it, it, the, that the, that's the part of this. The idea of convenience, I've never been able to accept that because What's convenient about having a server in your house? I hate dealing with Wi-Fi at my house, okay? <laughs> it's a pain in the... No, like, I'm like, I'm like why don't I have an IT guy at home? Chuck, it's not something you forgot you did. Yes. It's not something well, someone did or your husband well, set up for you and you forgot you did when you're Secretary of State. And Come what on, a, what a terrible everybody. Look.
You know, like so many of these Clinton scandals, and it's impossible to imagine that this wasn't going to surface. Andrea, last word. And yeah, just one quick point. We now see new emails never turned over, never mm. before revealed that the IG found. What's that all about? And one of them has her writing to Huma Abedin that she doesn't, you know, that she'll go with a state.gov or another uh, private device after one of the one of the attempts or after spamming and, and things were not being received. This was early on. But she said, we want to make sure that the personal is not accessible, which is exactly to the point that Chuck was just making. NBC's Andrea Mitchell, thank you. Chuck Todd, thank you as well. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.